In today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can create a subtle but pretty cute effect for button blocks in Squarespace. So this is the final result that we're going to be going for. You can see how we have an underline that slides one way from a left side to the right side of the link, and then it sort of changes color in the middle of its journey. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can make this happen. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Brine, but you're going to be able to achieve the same look for both 7.0 and 7.1. So I already have here a couple of things in place. So I have two image blocks that have some text on the side, and then I have a button block here and another one down here. Now you're going to be able to achieve this customization for any size of button block. So you're going to be able to use the large block, the medium block, and the small block with just a little tweak inside the snippets. Another thing that I modified already here is the color for the button. So I set the background color to transparent or to white inside the site styles. And I set the text of the button to pink. Now, before we add that underline, I actually want to modify a little bit of the spacing that we have here on the sides, because without that background color for the button, it the link looks a little bit off. So let's go ahead and take care of that first. So I'm going to inspect here with my inspector tool, and we're going to see which container we need to target to be able to get rid of the padding. So right off the bat, the element that I landed on has the padding for the bottom. So jackpot, this is the one that we're going to be targeting to be able to remove that extra spacing that we have on the sides. So let's go ahead and take a look at how Squarespace added that padding in the first place to see if we can use the same selector to remove it. So if we take a look on the right side over here, we can see that we have the padding up here where it says 25 pixels and 46 pixels. Now this was set under this selector here that says SQS block button and SQS block button element large. So we can definitely use this little snippet here because it's specific enough that it's for the buttons. And if you want to make this adjustment just for certain types of blocks, like certain size of blocks, then the snippet is going to work for you because you're going to be able to tell your browser if this is meant to happen only for large blocks, for medium blocks, or for small button blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. And then depending on the size of the block or the button block that you're going to be using, just make sure that you change this keyword here for the appropriate one for your button. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the padding. Now, I don't mind the padding at the top or at the bottom. I just want to remove the ones on the side. So let's go ahead and remove the one from the left side. We're going to set that to zero. And I'm also going to remove the one from the right side. Just like that. All right, awesome. So if we now take a look, we're going to see how we now have only padding at the top and at the bottom. We can modify those later if we want to, but for now, I think this is good. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our underline. So the way that we can achieve this customization is by having the underline as sort of like separate element. This way, we're going to be able to move it, modify it, adjust it with whatever without affecting the rest of the button. So the way that we're going to bring in this underline is by using a pseudo element. Now we've tackled pseudo elements before here on the block, but if you've never heard of them or you've never used them, basically it's just a way for you to create a fake element via CSS to add it to something else that you have on the site. So this is going to be the best approach that we can use to create the underline and create the hover effect that we're after. So the first thing that we need to do here is to find a container where we can attach that pseudo element to. Now, because we want the underline to be the same width as the text that we have inside the button, it's a good idea to find a container that already carries that width. That way, it's going to be much easier to set up our underline. Now, if we take a look at the element that we're standing on right now, we can see that this one already has the width of the text. So this is great. This is definitely an option that we can go for. But before we're 100% decided on this, let's go ahead and take a look at the parent container of this element just to see if that one could also be an option. So if we take a look at this container that's holding our link, you can see how it's much wider than the text that we have inside a button. So this is definitely not a good way to go. We're just going to stay with the A element and we're going to be using this one as sort of the anchor for our pseudo element. 
All right, so now that we know what we're doing and on which container we're going to add that pseudo element to, let's just go ahead and target it via CSS. Now, at this point, you need to decide if you want to apply this hover mode to all block sizes. So if you want to apply it to small, medium and large button blocks, or if you want to apply it just for one particular block. If we take a look at the class that we have here, we see one that's called SQS block button element large and another one called SQS block button element. Now the class that you pick here is going to depend on whether you want this customization to apply to all block sizes or just one particular size. Now in my case, I only want to apply this customization to large button blocks. So I'm going to be using this class over here. I'm just going to grab this one and I'm going to add that to my CSS and I'm going to add the pseudo element to this. So I'm going to be creating an after pseudo element. And then to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is add the content property. So I'm going to be creating an empty container here that is going to have certain dimensions that is going to determine the size and the height of my underline. And then I'm going to add a background color to this to be able to actually see that underline that I'm creating. So I'm going to start with the empty content property and then I'm going to set a height of around three pixels a width of 100%. Next, I'm going to be setting this to position absolute so that we're able to move the line the way that we need to to create the effect that we're after. And then before we continue with the position, I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick background color over here just to make sure that we are actually seeing what's happening. So right now we have the line completely aligned to sort of the edge of the word that we have here or the container that we're attaching the pseudo element to. And it's also at the top. So that's like not the correct position for the underline. Let's go ahead and move this. So I'm going to be setting the left offset to zero so that the line aligns to the left side of the container. And then I'm going to be setting the bottom as zero. So that way we're going to be able to have an actual underline and not that top line that we were having before. Now there's something weird happening here because the line is not really taking the 100% width of the container that we're attaching it to, which is much narrower than the line that we're seeing right now. So let's go ahead and fix that by making sure that our browser knows that we're trying to use the dimensions of this container as the reference for the width of the line. So to be able to tell it that, what we're going to do is we're going to retarget that same container, the one that we're attaching the pseudo element to, but without the pseudo element, and we're going to set it as a reference point for that underline. So the way that we're going to do that is by giving it a quick position relative over here. So right now you can see as soon as I add that position relative to the code, the line just shrinks down and now it matches the width, the 100% width of the container that we're targeting. All right, so now that we're done with this part, let's go ahead and bring in the color. So I have a green teal-ish color over here that I'm going to be using. And I'm actually going to set this to background color real quick. All right, so we have that green color happening and then this is going to change to pink once we go into the hover mode. Now to create our hover mode, we have to modify pretty much two things. We're gonna to have to modify the width of the line and we're also going to modify the place where the line starts. So let me show you how this works. First, we're going to start with a width of zero. So I'm going to go back into the pseudo element that we just created to this original underline and I'm going to set the width to zero because we want the line not to be seen when it starts and then to expand out while we're on hover. We're going to start with this width of zero and then we're going to bring back that width to 100% on hover. Now I'm going to be using the same element, so the same SQS block button element large as the trigger for the hover mode. So when somebody goes over any part of this particular container, the hover mode gets activated. So this is going to be my trigger. And then once that happens, I'm going to alter the after that is also added to that same element. So I'm going to add my after over here without any spaces in between because both the trigger and the target are part of the same element. So now once we target this hover mode, what we're going to do is modify the width of that pseudo element and set it back to 100%. So now once I do this, you're going to see how the line completely shows. Now, of course, that's a little bit too blunt. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of a transition here so that we can see the movement from zero to 100%. So I'm going to set this to all because we're going to be modifying at least two things here. And then I'm going to 
said a uh, timing of around 0.4 seconds, something like that. Let's take a look. All right, awesome. So you can see if I leave it this way, it's actually a pretty cool hover mode, so you can stop the tutorial here if you like. However, I'm going to keep going. So you can see how the line goes from zero to 100% with when I hover over any part of that container that I'm targeting. However, if we take a look at the result that we have here, you can see how the line ends on the right side and not on the left side the way that we have it right now. So what we're going to do, or the first modification that we're going to do here is actually change this offset to the right side. So what this is going to do is give us that final stage of the hover mode and have the line end on the right side. So we're on the right track here. Now the other thing that we need to modify is that the line should end on the right side but it should start expanding from the left side. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the left offset over here. So what this is going to do is attach a line to the left side while we're in hover and make that 100% width happen from left to right. And then when we're out of the hover mode, the right side is going to kick in. So the line is going to start from this side and then the 100% is going to shrink down from the left side. And that is going to give us this final result that makes it look like the line is sort of looping through around the entire container. Now, the last thing that we need to do here is basically just change the color of the line while that is happening. So the way that we're going to do that is by simply adding here a different background color. And in this case, I'm going to use the same pink that I have for the text of the buttons over here. And with that in place, you're going to see how the line sort of starts green, but really quickly turns to pink to match the color of the text. And then once you're out of the hover mode, you can see a little peak of that green action happening over here. Now, of course, if you want to make this lower, you can go ahead and increment the seconds over here in the transition. So let's go ahead and set this to like 0.9 seconds and see what that looks like. You can see here the line and you have a much better view of how the line changes color. So you can definitely adjust this to your liking. I prefer to have it quickly like this for 0.4 seconds. And there we go. Now we have a subtle but really cute animation for butt blocks in Squarespace.